So as I noted in our hands-on impressions with the 999 MacBook Air, this base model MacBook is a good option for Mac users in search of a no-frills laptop experience. If you're the type that primarily uses a laptop for everyday tasks like web browsing, writing, spreadsheets, and other things of that ilk, then the MacBook Air is more than capable of handling such needs. But should you consider the 2020 MacBook Air? Should you upgrade if you're coming from one of the previous two updates? Watch your hands-on video while through for the details. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Mac malware may be on the rise recently, but Indigo Internet Security X9 has two crucial tools that can help you keep your Mac safe, secure, and protected from internet threats. It includes Virus Barrier, the world's number one best Mac antivirus, which blocks all varieties of adware, spyware, and malware from infecting your Mac. It protects Macs against every known Mac malware threat. In the latest update that was just released, scans faster than ever before. It can even scan your iPhone, iPhone, iPad or iPod touch devices when they're connected to your Mac. The bundle also includes Net Barrier, a two-way firewall that not only prevents incoming attacks on your network, like Apple's built-in firewall does, but it can also alert you when apps on your Mac try to phone home and potentially violate your privacy. Get 50% off Inigo's Mac Internet Security X9 bundle today by visiting the link in the description. Special thanks to Intego for sponsoring 9to5Mac. As I mentioned during our 2020 top features overview, I opted for the base model 999 configuration simply because I was interested to try the cheapest laptop that Apple sells. The base configuration of the MacBook Air comes with the following specs, but you can upgrade your RAM, SSD, and even the CPU if your budget allows for it. So we have the Retina display with True Tone. We have the 1.1 gigahertz dual core 10th generation Intel i3 processor that turbos up to 3.2 gigahertz. You also have eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, which is actually a bump over what it used to be. It used to be just 128. So that's a nice increase in storage space. And then you have the Intel Iris Plus graphics. You have the backlit magic keyboard this time around. So the butterfly keyboard is no more. And then you have also touch ID. You have the force touch trackpad and you have two Thunderbolt three ports. So that in a nutshell makes up the MacBook Air 2020 edition. Now, although no frills, the 2020 MacBook Air is a well-built machine. The aluminum unibody chassis with the teardrop design remains just as attractive and as functional as it's ever been. The display on the MacBook Air, while not enjoying key benefits such as the P3 wide color support found on the MacBook Pro, still looks great. It features less brightness than the MacBook Pro, but unless you're in bright sunlight, it should be adequate enough for most situations. Now, to avoid sounding like a broken record, I'm just going to resist trying to make the majority of this review about that updated keyboard, but that's hard to do given how big of a change the keyboard is when compared to the previous two MacBook Air releases. The keyboard, which adopts a scissor switch design with more perceived key travel and more generous spacing, makes typing feel much improved. This is accentuated by Apple's willingness to include fan favorite features like the inverted T arrow keys and a hardware escape key. Now, granted, the MacBook Air has always had the hardware escape key because it's never been weighed down by the unnecessary touch bar that's present on every other MacBook Pro model by now. So if you've been hesitant about buying an Apple laptop because of the bad things you've heard or experienced with the previous butterfly keyboard, then there's no longer a need to worry in that regard. In fact, the keyboard is the one reason why I would recommend upgrading from the last generation MacBook Air to this one. It makes a huge difference. But besides the keyboard, there are other physical design details that matter here as well. For example, the inclusion of two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side of the MacBook Air facilitates both charging and external expansion capability. As a MacBook Air user, I occasionally find it inconvenient not to have at least one port on the right side of the computer, which makes it easier to connect depending on how your machine is positioned on your desk or whatever the case may be. On the entry-level MacBook Pro and all the MacBook Air models, the only port present on the right side of the machine is the 3.5 millimeter headphone input. Higher end MacBook Pros of course have Thunderbolt 3 ports on both the left and right side of the machine which is just so much more convenient depending on the circumstance that you find yourself in. Now as I've waxed poetic about before, Thunderbolt 3 is perhaps one of the most useful ports in the recent history of computer I.O. Not only does it handle recharging your MacBook Air but it also handles display output along with PCIe SSD access, audio interface access, even GPUs. In 
other words, there is no shortage of handy Thunderbolt 3 peripherals available to connect to. And I've already covered a few of my favorites in a previous post and video, so be sure to check that out. And if you're a Pro Display XDR user, one of the most important characteristics of Intel's 10th generation CPUs is the inclusion of updated Iris Plus graphics. Yes, Intel's integrated GPU is now capable of driving Apple's high-end display at full 6K resolution. And with the recent release of the 13-inch MacBook Pro, every MacBook in Apple's lineup is now capable of running the Pro Display XDR at full resolution. I guess the consensus here is that from a build and design perspective, the MacBook Air isn't spectacular in any one area, but it is highly functional for everyday computing, and the small and lightweight form factor makes it an ideal travel companion, whether you're on the train, in an airplane, at the airport, whatever the case may be. Now, as you might expect, the biggest question mark going into this review of the MacBook Air has to do with performance. And being that I opted for the 999 version, the only 2020 MacBook Air model that comes with a dual core CPU instead of a quad core CPU, I didn't exactly expect to be blown away by the machine's performance. My expectations were largely confirmed after putting the 2020 MacBook Air to the test. It should go without saying, but this is not the machine for you if you want to do intense video rendering, exporting, editing, etc. Now for editing, simple video shot on your iPhone is going to be fine, but for complex work in apps like Final Cut Pro 10, where you're pushing color correction, adding effects, using plugins, this is not the machine you'll want to use. But again, that should come as no surprise, as this computer obviously wasn't designed with such workflows in mind. Of course, in a pinch, you could technically edit high quality videos in the aforementioned scenarios, but it's not something you're going to wish to be subjected to on a regular basis. Now, if you know you're going to be engaging in more intense activities on a more regular basis, Basis, then you should at least consider upgrading to the quad core i5 CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Both of these additions will help immensely when it comes to editing high quality video on your MacBook Air. Now, of course, it's not going to perform as well as a higher end MacBook Pro, but it'll do okay as long as you set your expectations accordingly. For everything else though, multitasking with multi-window, browsing the web, typing out research papers and pages, creating spreadsheets and numbers, and even playing most Apple Arcade games. The MacBook Air, even the entry-level model, performs well. And for those times when you do need extra GPU power or perhaps a larger and faster SSD, there's always Thunderbolt 3 expandability, which will allow you to do just that. And here lies sort of an issue with recommending a basic Apple computer like the 999 MacBook Air. If you're going to spend that type of money to do what amounts to basic work, then why not just go for an iPad? Depending on your needs, you may still prefer a traditional desktop computer with a traditional desktop operating system like macOS, but much will depend on the types of apps you regularly use and how you typically use a computer. In other words, do you really need full feature multi-window support offered by macOS? And are there apps that you use that simply aren't offered on the iPad? Do you ever need to run Windows, whether from a virtual instance perspective or via bootcamp? If you answer yes to any of those questions, it will make more sense to stick to a traditional laptop like the MacBook Air. But for more casual usage, browsing the web, researching, writing, etc., I would personally pick an iPad Pro plus Magic Keyboard in most instances. After all, the iPad Pro is like having two machines in one, a really great tablet and a solid, albeit somewhat limited, laptop computer. Now, the problem with such a recommendation, and I do realize this, is that even the smaller 11-inch iPad Pro plus Magic Keyboard costs more than the entry-level 2020 MacBook Air, so it's not a decision that you'll make solely based on cost. Really, you're just going to have to kind of think about how you use your computer and whether or not a MacBook Air or an iPad is right for you. And I think that even the $329 10.2-inch baseline iPad is going to work for a whole lot of use cases, even for some of those who may be considering an entry-level MacBook Air. Now, you guys know me by now. I tend to buy Macs that are well-equipped with a healthy amount of storage, the fastest processors, plenty of RAM, etc. But this time, I wanted to do something different and venture towards the opposite end of the spectrum. The 2020 entry-level MacBook Air is a decent performer. It's uber portable, and it features tried-and-true design and build quality. It even features 
expandability via Thunderbolt 3 that lets you eke out even more performance and connect to all sorts of peripherals, including Apple's Pro Display XDR via high-speed I.O. In the end, what I found was a machine that performed largely as expected. Of course, it has that great keyboard in tow as well. The MacBook Air gives you the full macOS experience that you can take with you on the go for just $9.99. Regardless of the build-to-order configuration that you decide on, the MacBook Air is a machine that most casual users looking for a traditional desktop computer should definitely consider. But that all being said, the MacBook Air is about as vanilla as it gets when it comes to Apple products. From a marketing standpoint, it's probably the most boring machine that Apple makes. But boring isn't necessarily a bad thing when it comes to needing a reliable traditional desktop that just works. And that's largely what you can come to expect from the 2020 MacBook Air. What do you think? Would you consider the MacBook Air as your main computer? Sound off down below in the comments with your thoughts. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to Intego for sponsoring 9to5Mac. Don't forget, the Intego Internet Security X9 bundle has two crucial tools to help you keep your Mac safe. Virus Barrier X9 helps protect your Mac against every known Mac malware threat, while Net Barrier is a two-way firewall that not only prevents incoming attacks on your network, but can also prevent apps from phoning home and violating your privacy. Get 50% off Intego's Mac Internet Security X9 bundle today by clicking the link in the description. For more news, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to the various 9to5Mac podcasts for even more coverage. Check the links down below in the description to subscribe today.